r slash ask reddit what are some cheat codes you've found in the game of life walk with a purpose for some reason people think you're busy and you don't get hassled reminds me of george on seinfeld when he acts like he's always annoyed so everyone assumes he's working hard he leaves his car at work so people think he never leaves lol makes a secret nook under his desk for work naps george is an inspiration no one stops a guy or girl carrying a pizza, it can get you backstage to concerts. I'm a pizza guy, the only people that stop me are the stingy old people who won't let me go into the apartment building as they come out because that's the rules and I have to be buzzed in. Did you try carrying a clipboard too, just in case? Take a $1 bill and flip it over. Now tape a $5 bill and tape it to the end of the upside down single with as little tape as possible to make it secure. Now feed the $5 bill into a change machine. The coin machine reads the 5, gives you quarters, then reads the upside down single, rejects that, and boom. You got yourself a felony. This is the caliber of post I was expecting. Actual cheat codes. Not be nice to your family and. Surprise. They won't hate you. Thank you. R slash unethical life pro tips. I am an assistant teacher in a preschool. Asking if kids can use their sitting muscles and listening muscles during circle time makes the kids want to show me how strong they are. Ah, the old exploiting human brutishness trick. That's a good one. Teach. Going to use this on my colleagues. Can you use your shut the duck up muscles and shut the duck up? If you are punctual, smartly dressed, and quite friendly, you can actually get pretty far in most jobs without being that good at anything or trying very hard. This so much, nobody cares if the guy who is 15 minutes early every day and never causes a fuss is seen taking a few smoke breaks or browsing reddit a few times, but the guy who is 5 minutes to 15 minutes late a few days every week, you can guarantee he is being watched like a hawk. Not just jobs. But being punctual for anything, appointments, dates, meetups, events, I honestly get stressed if I'm not at least 15 minutes early to anything I need to go to, especially if I'm traveling with someone who chronically won't start getting ready until the last minute. Louise. When someone says something true, say you're right, not I know, it'll make them feel better and you've still shown everyone how awfully clever you are. I love you, you're right works every time if any website offers a percentage coupon code like 10 percent off try higher values like 20 percent off they often have them yet yeah, i'm going straight for 100 percent off and working my way down from there try 200 percent off and see if they'll actually pay you to take their product if you're genuinely pleasant to be around and you show up when it counts people will let you get away with a lot of slacking off can confirm one of the reasons my boss puts up with a lot of my shit is because I do my job. I show up when scheduled. Unless I'm sick as a dog or I have a family emergency. And I don't cause drama. Same. I joke around with my boss a lot and I know he gets a little tired of it sometimes. But he always lets it slide because I'm a reliable worker and have never called out from work except for one time when my dog was sick. If you tuck a chicken's head under its wing and wave the chicken in a circle, it will automatically fall asleep. It's not a very good cheat code, but it's still a cheat code to get you sleeping chickens. What do you mean by wave in a circle? Bring it around town. You don't have to always give away the recipe, by that I mean. Don't over explain yourself. If you can't do something, 9 out of 10 times it's okay to simply say unfortunately I'm not able to do that can't swing it this time, etc. You don't have to go on and on about why, or make up reasons and list them off. Over explaining just ends up looking more suspect than simply being clear and concise. I like this one. I have found myself making up elaborate stories to explain why I couldn't attend an event or something. Just be brief, honest, and to the point. Sorry, I'm not gonna be able to make it to your party because of my crippling social anxiety. You become the people you surround yourself with. Guess I'm a nobody. You can control the heartless yo. I cannot overstate how much dressing well and being well groomed will impact your life. It'll drop the difficulty by 2 or 3 levels. No joke. People will treat you vastly differently. The opposite is also true. I did this but took it a step further. 
Got my hideously misaligned teeth fixed. Got braces as an adult. Highly recommended if you never had it sorted as a kid. And holy shit did the money spend pay for itself in no time. Think about it. The less resistance there is to a person wanting to make eye contact with you, the longer and more in depth your engagements will be with those people, and the more confident you are in turn. This can lead to better jobs, promotions, etc. Edit. For those asking, I was 27. Got them off when I was 28. About 18 months total. Full train track style braces. Though I did pay a little extra for ceramic braces on the top row. They have a white appearance so are a little more camouflaged. No one really cared when I had them on. Other than the occasional person who would inquire because they were thinking about getting them too. Total cost about 6000 Australian dollars. I'm 35 now. And yep I still look awesome. Moa edit. Yeah probably should have mentioned it's more of a pay to win than a cheat code. But this actually does create a real sense of pride and accomplishment for the money spent. My teeth are ducked up and it's seriously my biggest insecurity. People notice immediately. How old were you when you got them fixed? Compliment your children with you are a hard worker and not your smart. Studies show that kids who think they're hard workers outperform kids who think they're smart. Can confirm. Was told I was smart as a kid. Terrible worker edit. I don't mean to confirm this as causation. Just my experience. If you weren't told you were smart as a kid, would you still be a terrible worker? That is the real question. Ask questions. About everything. Ask people about themselves. Be open about stuff you don't understand. And ask questions about that. When you forget someone's name, own up to it and just ask them. I am amazed at how many people won't acknowledge even a tiny amount of ignorance. Or won't show honest curiosity about something. Can't admit they've forgotten something they feel is important. And won't ever ask for help. Guys, your life becomes so much easier if you just drop the ducking ego and ask. The best advice I ever received was from my grandmother. I was a talkative child and would ask questions non-stop. When I apologized for asking so many one day she looked me straight in the eye and said never stop asking questions. This is diametrically opposite from my experience as an inquisitive child. As an adult you can tell almost any kid who is running to stop running and they will. Man, you know way better kids than I do. Not a cheat code, but an easter egg. If you ask someone if they know all the words to I'm a little teapot around 80% of the people you ask will start singing it. Half of those will do the gestures. I'm at a tattoo studio right now and I asked the 300 pound, intimidatingly tattooed owner of the shop if he knew the words to I'm a little teapot. Without hesitation he started reciting it while doing the pantomimes. Impressive. To seem charming. All you have to do a lot of the time is to be an engaged listener. You don't need an amazing sense of humor to be able to lay on the compliments or regale people with stories. Just listen to other people in a way that shows you are interested and not only waiting for your turn to talk. Make eye contact. Don't interrupt them. Don't turn the conversation to be about you. Ask good questions. Edit. I just want to add. As Pamena comments here, that being engaged listener is not the same as being a sort of conversational doormat where you have to allow people to drone on and on about things that don't interest you, annoy you, offend you, or drain you. Merely suffering through an encounter is pretty much the opposite of what I am talking about. It's about letting yourself be interested in, and learn from, other people and not focus so much on feeling like you have to be an entertainer. And being an engaged listener is really the opposite of the person who just listens and never wants to talk about themselves. You are putting yourself into the conversation with your interested responses. You are guiding it to places you find interesting. Just suffering through boring conversations is not engaged listening. Any advice on how to work on being more interested in what other people are saying? Edit. Looks like you already gave some tips. Ask open-ended questions that you can't answer with a simple no or yes. Then, once the ball is rolling, organically lead the convo with more questions and try to tie in with stuff they said before. Mirror body posture. Underpromise and overperform. Say you'll achieve less than you think you will and then do more and everyone will be impressed. It works well at a job. I always tell my girlfriend to be ready for 2 minutes of terrible sex. Oftentimes I make it up to 4 minutes of just bad sex. My man. 
the correct response to any compliment is thank you. You can then follow it up with a comment if you'd like to continue the conversation. If someone likes your dress, thank you. It has pockets. If someone compliments your art, thank you. I've been practicing. If someone asks if you're a professional singer because you have a good singing voice, thank you. I just sing for fun. Not only does it make you seem confident and self-assured, it tells them that they are right. That's a friendly thing to do. This even works if you don't believe the compliment. Saying, oh, no, I'm ugly. When someone compliments your appearance not only tells them that they're wrong, it makes you think of yourself as ugly. A better answer would be, thank you. I really appreciate that and I don't always believe it. So hearing that from you helps. I've started going with thank you. That's nice to hear. I have a heated throw blanket in my living room in the winter. I wrap my coat up in it, crank up the heat and in a few minutes, my coat is toasty warm so I can brave the coldest day. Also toss your jeans in the dryer for 15 minutes on a cold morning and you will have similarly warm jeans. It's a nice perk if you have guests over too. Hey, take off your pants and let me warm those babies up. Just be nice, particularly to people in the service industry, your job, your personal interactions, even your calls into customer service will go 100% easier if you're just nice to people and recognize that they're probably just trying to do their job, not screw you over. Be very nice, and if you're trying to get a refund or something wasn't to your liking, always go for the disappointed routine and not the angry routine, at least in my own personal experience. Businesses are much more responsive to this. As someone who has worked in retail and the service industry in the past, I can confirm, nothing makes you see red faster than a customer immediately using that tone of voice that implies you're some kind of idiot for their being dissatisfied, especially if their issue turns out to be the result of their own stupidity or dongheadedness. When married don't stop treating your significant other like you did when you were trying to win them over. It is a great way to show them you're still as infatuated with them as you were when you first met. Date your wife, or someone else will. Well that's a lot less crude than my motto, I keep my husband's balls empty and his stomach full. When I was in my old 500 plus person building, I kept a stack of papers on my desk. When I was bored, or got tired of sitting down. I'd get up, grab my stack of papers and walk around. I called them my walking papers and did this for months. Got a lot of head nods and not one question the entire time. People always assumed I was on an important mission. But nope, not in the least. P.S. Worked on the executive floor wing. 2. My friend is a janitor at a pretty new school. Open bracket. Not much broken stuff. So on his downtime he walks the building rather quickly with whatever tool he decides. The teachers and staff always think he's going to fix something. LOL. I work at a steel mill and do the same thing when things are slow on day shift. Nobody is going to question or follow the guy carrying a shovel. If you have no complaints about your food service staff at a restaurant, ask to see the manager and pay a compliment and a thank you about the server slash host staff. Usually people want to see a manager to complain, and a compliment is nearly always welcome. I've gotten countless free drinks appetizers chips percent off my bill, all for just making a polite comment to management. Edit. Thanks for the reddit gold. Kind stranger. You probably caused many heart attacks until they realized you wanted the manager for good reasons. Wanted to say this. We had a girl that we absolutely adored. So we asked for a manager to compliment her and she immediately sat down with us and asked if everything was okay. LOL. Her concern was precious. You can borrow almost all of your textbooks from the library as a college student because of modern book rental agreements most colleges have. WorldCat allows you to be linked to almost any library in America, and all you have to do is find your book in the system and fill out a request form at a library and it should be there in a week. I've saved probably $2000 doing this in my first two years of college. All of my courses now require an online code to do the mandatory homework assignments, which you can only try by buying a textbook full price, open bracket, or you can buy just the code for $20 less. So only 130 instead. How generous. 
If you admit you're wrong and make changes to whatever it is that you're wrong about, people will respect and appreciate you more. Unfortunately this requires the swallow ego, pill patch installed. Without this you will be incapable of being a civil person. Not always. I have a policy of being accountable for my role in any miscommunication or conflict. It's amazing how often that is taken as me being at fault rather than as me admitting my contribution to the issue. Dishonest or self unaware people will frequently exonerate themselves completely the second someone else admits any wrong. Even if they were an equal, or often bigger, contributor to the problem. This goes doubly true in workplaces, where the perception will be that the person who admitted any wrongdoing was the guilty party. Those situations can paradoxically lead to the honest person, the person admitting their role, getting a bad reputation, not advocating against honesty and personal accountability, just saying it's important to be aware of the risks associated with it because these things will happen and it's less painful if you anticipate it as a possibility. I had a professor in college who, while lecturing, suddenly let out a huge fart. Without pausing, he turned his head as if talking to someone behind him, said Gesundheit, and continued lecturing as if nothing had happened. It immediately diffused defused any potential awkwardness and embarrassment, and I vowed to use the same strategy if the same thing ever happened to me in front of a large crowd of people. My fav line for this is did you hear that a hole talking shit behind my back? First time I heard it I was in tears. I let one rip once and my uncle said not bad for a 1 inch speaker could not stop laughing. Faking confidence usually leads to actually being more confident. I love the phrase fake it till you make it. It's incredible how much success is a byproduct of just acting confident about whatever you are doing. Public speaking is fake it till you make it for at least 90% of people. I was planning on asking for a raise later that day and luckily a very belligerent customer came in who was not going to be allowed in. Really had to stand my ground. Stood up tall, made eye contact, and flatly told her no. Had to do a stare down for a moment before she gave up and stormed out. I'd never had to be like that with a customer before and was internally shaking in my boots. My boss was standing behind me the whole time watching how I'd handle it. And once it was over patted me on the back and said I'd done exactly what I was supposed to. And she was impressed. Got the raise. Get a credit card like Amex Blue that has 3-6% cash back at groceries. Buy all your items at grocery store. I'll use Kroger as an example. You can buy normal groceries plus gift cards. Amazon. Delta. H&M. McDonald's. Whatever. And get the cash back on that deal. Then. If you time it with their 4x fuel rewards. You can save $1 gallon off gas up to 35 gallons. Altogether, the math works out to being 12-15% off pretty much everything if I recall correctly. Been doing this for years. I'll plan large purchases from Amazon or Home Depot around their 4x fuel points so I can get the gift cards. Edit. This also includes Kroger stores that operate under a different name. I. E. King Supers. Pause like wait. When asked a question or engaging in idle conversation and someone is speaking do not immediately begin your reply when they stop speaking. They usually aren't done. And in the case of questions most people unfinished and if you give them time they usually provide to answer to the question as well. So yeah listen as well. Listen. Don't wait to speak. Oh god you're right but the problem with that is also that they will just keep on going endlessly. Also. People like talking about themselves. When you meet someone just ask them questions about their lives or the things they've done. If you have enough questions you won't ever run out of things to talk about during the conversation and they walk away feeling suru heard. Plus, then you know more about them and next time you see them you will have even more to talk about or follow up on. Hey last time I saw you you were mentioning this thing at your job. How did that go? Etc. This is great until you realize that a majority of people never asks about you. That's true and that sucks. I'm mostly talking about networking and not about deep friendships that I care about. Doing your own research especially on the important stuff. You would be amazed about the bad information people use to make life choices. The remain silent dialogue option is useful. Even if you have to scroll down to find it, it can keep you from failing or getting locked out of certain quest lines. I've mastered the basic acknowledgement skill. Someone will inevitably say something that on its own, means nothing. 
they're implying something. But it's often effective to just get them to say it out loud. Sometimes, it's the buffer between just do it, and that sounded more intense than I thought. Okay, in that go on kind of tone. Once you unlock not giving a duck about other people's thoughts you basically double your mana indefinitely. When my daughter was little and still believed band-aids cured things. One time she had a belly ache so I put one on her belly and it made her feel better. Power of placebos. Use the word soon instead of later with your loved ones or if you are trying to form a new connection with someone. It shows you are interested in talking but currently busy with something. Egg talk to you soon. Edit this doesn't apply to all the scenarios. And it's not creepy or serial killery if you follow rule 1 and 2. In dating. That's another cheat code in the game of life. Edit to what is rule 1 and 2. I can confirm that this doesn't actually work in all scenarios. When your so asks you when you'll empty the dishwasher, and you say soon, you can only get away with that so many times. No matter what your bedtime and wake up time is stick with it. After a decade of being that person on Facebook at 3am and off to work 4 hours later I started to view sleep as a enjoyable activity not a chore. Game changer. Mornings are never a drag. If I have trouble sleeping. I can make up for it the next morning without ducking up my whole day. When it's your bedtime, turn off the lights and wait. And don't touch your ducking phone or your computer. Don't get out of bed wait. When your alarm goes off, get up. Repeat for two weeks. Enjoy a better life. Quack. I agree with 99% of this. Sleep hygiene is incredibly important, as is a good schedule. However, if you're like me and can lie in bed, eyes closed, for hours without falling asleep, don't do that. After 30 minutes, get up, go to some other room, and do something boring. Stare at the wall, read the phone book, make and drink a cup of tea. Lying in bed until you fall asleep is good if it doesn't take 3 hours, because after a while being awake in bed makes it harder to fall asleep. Basically, if you can't fall asleep, Take a break and try again. Edit. Misplaced comedic too. I should have specified caffeine free teas. Some teas are intended to make you sleepy. But personally I just go for my favorite herbal blend. Blue eyes. If you're physically attractive you can get away with a lot of shit. I have a friend who was a lingerie model. Truly. Epically beautiful. She had a terrible pregnancy and the only thing that stopped her from puking was eating graham crackers non-stop. Halfway through her pregnancy, she had gained 50 pounds. She didn't look pregnant, just overweight. And she came to me in tears one day, because she was just realizing how mean people could be. No one was holding open doors, offering to carry things for her, giving her extra smiles, discounts, whatever. She had lived all her life with the beauty bonus and had thought most people were just really nice. On a side note, I'm not so sure the beauty bonus is worth it. My two most beautiful friends are both smart as hell, but one is shy. The difficulty I've seen her have getting people to see past her face is shocking. Open bracket. Not the lingerie model, who was happy for people to stare at her chest and underestimate her, and then proceeded to run circles around them. I think the beauty bonus is helpful if your identity is rooted in something other than your appearance. Then your core sense of self isn't determined by your face body, if that makes sense. I've noticed late bloomers tend to be more grounded have stronger personalities because they didn't always rely on their looks. Edit. Your to your. Be born into a wealthy family. Ah. The old rosebud sheet. Several times in life I've cold called a company to confirm my interview time. I didn't have one prior to my call. But in their confusion and inability to even find my resume I've managed to secure an interview about 4 out of 5 times. Twice I've gotten the job. Sneeze on your knuckles before a fight to inflict poison damage. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.